All right, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year to y'all. Hope y'all had a wonderful year, and then New Year, new beginning, and then which means I'm going to put new CV axles in the truck. In this video, I'm going over the CV axles, specifically for the Tundras, but it, this possibly is the same that you can apply to every other cars and trucks. I'm no mechanics myself, so I'm just speaking of my experience. During the last year, 2022, I have popped countless CV axles due to my front end was having a problem and also due to the lift kits was bent. So I done countless repairs on my CV axles, either in the shop or either on the trail to keep the truck going. So I tried majority of the CV axles options out there for you. So which I will talk about in this video. If you like to, jump to a specific section, click down the time link in the description area. Before we start, I'd like to recommend an inexpensive parts to have as a backup, which is this wheel cap right here that covers the 39mm nut to reach in order to take off the CV axles. If you are not being careful, if the people who work on your truck not being careful, they more likely to damage the cap. And a damaged cap is no longer good to protect the dirt or the moist from going into this chamber right here. And it will more likely to cause the nut to cease and it will be super hard to remove. I'll put the Toyota part number down in the description for you. So this pair of CV axles as you can see in the videos are from Napa. They are called the extended CV axles and they provides higher articulation. They are slightly more expensive than the parts shops OEM replacement CV axles and they're an inch and a half to two inches longer than the OEM ones and also the parts store ones. This is what I had or what I can buy at the moment back in July when I was stuck in Colorado because my OEM CV axles were having problems due to my lift kits and stuff. And then the driver's side one finally broke down when I was trying to go over a ditch with a uh, steering wheel fully locked to the left and then four-wheel drive engaged and then it torn apart the outer uh, metal assembly inside and also tear the boots down but luckily it was still attached that it only have a small grinding noise when the truck was in two-wheel drive and that's how I made home and then that's also why there's a lot of grease being spun out this is my preferred mess to, to get to the CV axle it's a couple more extra steps compared to other videos on YouTube, but the benefits of taking off the upper control arm bolt and then the tie rod end is that I can take off the whole wheel bearing and the knuckle assembly. That way I don't have to lift them because they are heavy. Plus I get more room to work on it. With my aftermarket upper control arm and then the tie rod end, they come off really easy. All right, the UPS didn't fail me this time. As I just finished tearing down both sides, this showed up at my gate. And then now we're gonna unpackage this and then make a little comparison video with this and then the extended CV shaft and then also the other two. So this is part two of the video. Welcome to my collection. Now we're gonna talk about what made these axles different from the OEM Toyota axles. And the first, the outer parts are basically OEM. They are stronger metal. And what the difference is, is this red silicone boot. They're a little bit longer and then, and also they provide this ring right here, which act as a spacer to reduce the stress of the ribs on the boots. Other than the rubber O-ring, they also provide you with a ventilation hose to protect these uh, boots during the transportation. It equalizes the pressure between inside of the boot to the outside. The biggest difference is this inner rod. This inner rod is, if I remember correctly, is two inches longer than the stock inner rod. And to install the CVJ axles onto the truck is uh, different than installing the regular CV axles instead of popping it right out and then pop the new one back in. This one is different. So according to this instruction sheet that came in with the package, so the O-ring needs to stay at where they at when they came in, which as shown in the video, 
to prevent the maximum spacing against the rub. The extra step we might need to do after we finish installing the CV axle and then putting all the parts back onto the truck is that we need to let the truck off the jack stands to let it sit on itself to check for the clearance between the ribs of the red silicon boot. And then sometimes, according to this instruction, adjustment might needed to change the lens of the CV boots. That's why they provided us with two extra clamps. So they don't want the ribs rubbing, and then we have to maintain the certain, uh, certain distance between each ribs, and then it's all specified in the sheet. The instruction also stated that at the end, the air ventilation hose can be removed after the whole installation process. And after installing a new CV axle back into your front differential, make sure you top off the fluid when the truck sits level. The only part I wasn't showing in this video is a part of adjusting the boots. I came to realize after I let the truck go back and forward a little bit on its own wheel, the boot actually sits right within the measurements. So at the end, I didn't have to change the lens of the boots. So the project ends by putting out the air holes from the boots and then a test drive. So to begin with our comparison, I say there are three or four types of the CV axles you can get out there on the market. So to begin with the first one, which is the one that I'm holding on my hand. Now this is a basic, basic replacement you can get to replace your OEM axle that's broken. This is actually not a uh, Toyota Tundra CV axle. This belongs to a 100 series Land Cruiser. Well, even though it's for different vehicles application, but this is a great example to show you the difference between this one, so-called OEM direct replacement, and the actual OEM. They usually run fairly cheaper than the OEM axles, you can buy them from your local store such as Napa, O'Reilly, and AutoZone. Same as the extended CV axles, all the, all the auto stores do sell them, but under different brand names, such as the Import Direct from O'Reilly or Duralast from AutoZone. So the easiest way of how can you identify those basic axles is the three grooves on the inner end of the metal part. Based on my experience from all the CV axles that I have bought, most of the OEM replacement from the auto shop or eBay that they all came in with that. And then it goes the same for the extended shafts. You can find them on even Amazon, but they all came in in surprisingly identical designs that you almost suspect they made in the same factory but just slapped a different brand name on the label. This is the best replacement parts that you can get for your lifted tundras without costing an arm or leg. They will provide you more articulation and then more clearance than the stock auto shop CV axles. And all the parts store usually sell these CV axles, the basic one and then the extended one, within the similar price range. If you find one store sells cheaper, you should go with this cheaper one. I don't think there is much difference in quality. I shot this part of the video prior to the CVJ axles have arrived. These are the OEM CV axles I took off from the truck during my trip in Colorado. And as you can see in this, uh, in this short clips, the CV axle on the top, it actually got snapped out and then the whole boot and the whole metal assembly inside the housing was broken. And then the, the one on the bottom has a leaky boot. So I decided to replace both of them to the Napa extended shaft in Colorado. And I was lucky enough to find them in stock. So as a side-by-side -side comparison between the OEM axle and then the Napa CV axle is that First of all, obviously this is longer. According to their website, the Napa extended CV axle allows more 40 millimeter more travel than the stock CV axle. As you can also tell, the center shaft part of the Napa extended axle appears to be thicker than the OEM and also the inner boots looks longer. What's even more surprising is uh, these CVJ axles that I just put on the truck. They're even longer than the Napa extended CV axles. And the red silicone boots looks twice longer than the Napa and also the OEM. So if you go to CVJ axles website, they have two different versions for our Toyota Tundras. I got the lifted version since my truck is lifted. If your truck sits stock, you can also get a stock version. 
And not only that, if you rebuild your own axe or if you have the knowledge, you can buy the red silicon boots from them and then rebuild your own with much cheaper cost. Well, this is the end. Thank you for watching.